Oh. Um, if Stroke is asking if it is closed, it is now live again. So, I can pull up the player list if we want to just introduce. How about first and foremost, Square Root of Mag? So what's going on here? Why are we yeah, screaming? Sure. Yeah, sure, we totally do that. Um, hi, I'm Square Root One. For those of you who don't know, um, we have a pro league season two coming up uh, in the near future. Uh, for those of you. Who are interested in what it is. Uh, it's basically a team game uh, or like a team clan war kind of style thing. Uh, we had great success and a lot of fun with it uh, back in 2020, I believe. And uh, we're back for season two. So um, yeah, so that's coming up on the horizon. And uh, Hobo and I were gathered here together just to uh, talk a little bit about the players, uh, you know, analyze them. Uh, yeah, so hope. Hope for a lot of interest, you know, hope that everyone gets uh, really excited for it, so, yeah. Beautiful. Uh, first and foremost, how about we introduce the four team captains, the ones that this really matters to. Let's see here. Have, first and foremost, it's Jay. Your draft, destroy call, and C. All the admin on our server here. Yeah, so um, I did the choosing for the team captains, and uh, I chose the people who I fit, who I thought were the best fitted for the role. Um, there were some people when you signed up, you could either depend, depending, you could choose to be considered for a team captain, and or you could choose to not be considered for a team captain. Um, so you know there are some things were, that were taken into consideration when I was choosing. So first you had to actually volunteer to be a team captain for me to choose you. And then other than that, uh, things such as skill level, you know, activity in the community, um, and also like communication, stuff like that, uh, were all taken into consideration. Um, but yeah, so should we go over them one by one? Um, sure. Should we start with, I guess, it's Jay since uh, he's the f one who's gonna be making the first pick in our draft later. Um, what do you know about It's Jay Hobo? Uh, I don't know too much. I don't Fair believe enough. I've played him recently. He's on Little Wargame right now. Anyone watching the stream see his character profile here. He's got a wonderful 1,800 games under his belt. Uh, 24 ladder games with Division 2 rating. Yeah, so It's Jay is someone who is fairly new to the community in comparison to... Uh, a lot of people, especially like the other team captains, for example, who've been uh, they've been around for basically forever. Uh, I think it's Jay joined in the, the early 2022, something like that. Uh, so he hasn't been around for too much, but uh, he's definitely been someone who's been grinding a lot, playing a lot, and uh, is a very very friendly player. Um, and yeah, so I'd say he's definitely a mid tier, a mid to high tier player. Um, he's taking games off of players such as uh, Destroy Call and also Weird Rat and stuff like that. Uh, taking some games off of me as well. Um, but yeah, he's a very cool player. Uh, he mostly plays Rax, uh, Rax into uh, Mech Play. And he has experimented a little bit with Beast as well, but uh, yeah. I think it will be interesting to see how he goes. Uh, do you have them listed on the chat here in any particular? Um, in also, I'm going chat. to pull up the draft screen for anyone that wants to see it. On the... Uh, just a moment here, I manage my screens. I think your OBS is just, uh, yeah, it's currently on Global War Games, so you're gonna have to do a little bit of- Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, so when I went into the draft thing, I decided to, you know, in best interest to create, uh, the best format and, like, um, you know, I didn't want it to be someone who's, uh, like, highly skilled getting the first pick and stuff like that. Uh, so while it's Jay is very a skilled player, uh, I would rate him in skill-wise less, uh, in comparison to the other team captains, such as Weird Rat, Destroy, Call, and AC. Uh, so I gave him the first pick in effort to, uh, create the most balanced teams. So we'll see what he is able to pick and who he's gonna pick up for the first draft pick. Excellent. 
Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment, and I'd agree with a lot of that. Uh, not having seen a lot of his games, I can't speak too much to what I expect to see out of him. Um, I think it will be... This is going to be the running underdog team, pending he's able to pick up his players. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Um, I do have a, a few games of his uh, casted on my YouTube if you want to check that out, if you... Uh, are interested, or you could play him sometime. A shameless see. plug, if you want to drop down the little game chat. Yeah. Uh, I could do that, but uh, you know, maybe I'm sure most people already have seen it, so that's fine. Um, shall we move on to Weird Rat for the second team captain? Yeah, Weird Rat. It's like a player out of my own heart. Never really know what he's gonna do. You just know he's going to do something, and he's gonna do it very well. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think Weird Rat, out of the different uh, team captains here, has the best image of being someone who's very flexible. He's able to play all three races or all three factions. Um, he's really known for a lot of versatility, uh, is able to do a lot of different things. Um, personally, I feel like his strongest points are very strong uh, timing attacks on like two, maybe three bases. Um, but yeah, he's he's uh, he's grown a lot in the past like one and a half years um he used to be you know i'd say like a mid-tier player way back when uh he won the mentor tournament uh if you guys remember what that is a long time ago um but yeah he's definitely leveled up as a player since then and uh he's a very scary competitor and uh he's one of the team captains onwards to destroy call so for destroy call if you guys remember he was on top of a lot of the tournaments around the time of the Pro League, and he was also the team captain of the winning team. So that's obviously got to play into his favor for this second season of the Pro League. Yeah, Destroy Call is a very strong player. Um, he's definitely well prepared. Uh, he likes to like analyze his opponents very well and come up with different strategies to, uh, I guess, counter what he's doing and stuff like that. Um, definitely a scary opponent, and like you said, like you mentioned, uh, he was the team leader for the winning team of Pro League Season 1. So expect greatness out of this uh, this player and this team. Uh, and then the more recently, one. too, in the, um, what was this, the April tournaments, led by Consciously Eating, uh, Destroy, uh, Destroy Call was able to beat Weird Rat in the first round of the tournament. That's right. It was a best of one, but uh, it was a best know, of still, one. That is still know. um something going into it though. Yeah. Um. If we want to go back in history a little bit more, uh, compared to uh, consciously eating's tournament, uh, we had the May Cup of 2022, which I hosted, and Destroy Call was uh, second place in that, losing to Rhinus in the final, uh, but still a very good result. So, definitely a scary player for sure. Yeah, Rhinus, who is surprisingly not going to be participating in this. Yeah, He's I got was, exams, uh, so it's understandable, but it was interesting to see that development. Yeah, I was uh, actually messaging him, and he was like, yo, you should join, and he's like, nah. So, unfortunately, he's not here, um, but, you know, maybe next season if we have it, we'll see. And then onwards to AC, who is, if correct me if I'm wrong here, the main um, developer at this point for Little War Game. <laughs> Uh, sure, I think that's. I think technically it's Glava, but you know, okay. Uh, AC AC's the uh, one of the guys up there doing the development thing. Um, he's been a long time staple in the Little War Game community, and whenever he's active, he's always in the top, you know, top one, top two, top three uh, discussion. Pretty much since the beginning of the game. So uh, he's also a Grandmaster Zerg in StarCraft Two. So uh, very skilled in the RTS genre. I think he also played a couple of games of like. Uh, Age of Empires and stuff like that as well, so... Um, a scary opponent in terms for of, anyone. Yeah, for sure. In terms of raw skill, I'd say he's definitely number one. Um, but yeah, he hasn't played as much Little War game in the recent uh, few weeks, a few months, as the other team captains, so maybe that might be something. But uh, yeah, he's also a previous team captain of the first Pro League, where his team, Team YOLO, did pretty well. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Excellent. And with that, we have the four captains. Um, if we're gonna do a ranking, 
I think I might say Destroy Call, AC, Weird Rat, It's J. In terms of the captains alone, not necessarily the teams, as I don't have those players quite yet. Fair enough, fair enough. I can see that. Uh, for me, I've ranked them like unofficially in this order, where I, uh, if you look at the draft order, I gave who I thought was the weakest player the first round pick, and I gave AC, who I thought was the strongest player, uh, the fourth pick. So that's kind of my power ranking, but uh, yeah, I could see this recall being number one. I think uh, this recall and AC have played a couple of games, but I think AC's won most of them, so. Um, I will yeah. also add, I have not been too active in the community the past few months, so I'm a little bit out of it when it comes to um, up with a lot of the different new names and competitors. That's why I'm here. I'll fill you in all those details of the newer players that you're not quite familiar with and stuff like that. Yeah, and to stretch this out just a little bit longer, how about before we start looking at the individual players, we take a look at the map pool for this week. And then perhaps go down the uh, breakdown of how this tournament is going to actually play. Sure, sounds like a plan. So we have this wonderful gift I made. I believe was made by you. Yours truly. That's correct. It's moving a little bit quickly, but for anyone trying to watch, we have five maps: Ravage, Jade Wadi, Cursed Temple, Xenos, and Acadia. Only map here I'm not familiar with is Acadia. Yes, uh, so maybe let's start with Acadia. Acadia is a map uh, that's created by Stevenator, who's a member of the community. Um, I guess all maps are created by members of the community. Uh, but yeah, Acadia was uh, one of the maps that is not in the ranked map pool, so um, it's, uh, I guess, a newer map for some people. Uh, I definitely wanted to promote some, uh, add some maps made by players, um, so you might be able to see them in the upcoming weeks as well. Hint, hint. Um, but yeah, so Acadia is a pretty standard map. Uh, I think it's been uh, it's been considered to be like a standard map by most players. Um, but yeah, it's a new map for a lot of players as well. So uh, I'm really interested to see what people make out of it. Then of course we have a tried and true Ravage, easily the most played melee map, um, really over the game's history. Uh, game's been going strong since 2016, and there's only been a few times since I've joined 17 that um, I've seen something other than Ravage be the top melee map. Uh, game's a little bit older than 2016, actually. I think maybe 2015 or something like that. I'm not really. Yeah, let's check the sure. imprint. You could do that. Uh, it's probably somewhere. in the somewhere, but. It's, uh, if I had to guess, it's like... The game is an age. Or... It's an age yeah, older it's... than us. <laughs> Our accounts, at least. Um, but yeah, so Ravage is obviously the standard map everyone's played as. Everyone knows about it, so... Um, yeah, everyone is aware of it. Uh, the other maps, uh, why don't we go on to Jade Wadi, which this is... This one, one is... Of um, rank... This is an interesting map for a couple of reasons. For one thing, your moon is not in one of the two corners. You actually have a safe expansion to the left if you're on the top or the right if you're on the bottom uh, where you're able to get that second mine pretty easily. Uh, another interesting note about this map is the variation of height going down the middle of it where it's actually a lowered path on the center with uh, increasingly higher hills the right and left uh, making it so you can get some interesting surrounds and attacks depending on how you go about um, engaging your enemy. Yeah, there are some destructible uh, forges in the middle of the map as well to open up, uh, you know, surrounding paths for, for surrounds and stuff like that. Um, like, yeah, I guess you can, you know, hop into the editor and show them. Uh, also, Jade Wadi is a pretty large map. Uh, I'd say it's definitely one of the larger maps in the map pool. Um, additionally, the, the main being in a lower elevation uh, can be used for like raider shenanigans where you can like flash in and stuff like that. Um, As I can do with yeah. the zoom, unfortunately. Wait, we have secret hacks we can do here. <laughs> Personally, I don't really use this method, but it is something that you can do. Yeah. This is a fun fact for anyone watching. Zoom out in your browser, you can see more of the screen. 
I was mistaken. You do start in the lower hill. Yes, that's right. I'd say it's a somewhat standard map. Um, you know, it tends to be because of the long rush distance. There's a lot of, uh, I'd say, a lot of longer games compared to like short cheesy games, in my opinion. Um, but of course, this is all up to you guys, the players, to decide and figure out for yourselves. We're just giving you a brief overview. Yeah, there's a lot of play for um, both mech and raiders on this map. Also, I'm looking here now, and it seems like there's not invisible blockers on tops of some of these hills. That's correct. Um, I it's something I haven't really explored before, but that could be an interesting spot for something like a catapult, especially yeah, on a hill like this. Yeah, you can put catapults up there if you drop them. Uh, on one of the things, you can also build a tower on them with the little, like, the five piece if you yeah, I see get that. a worker there. Yeah. But, like, I, I don't know. It's up to you what you're gonna do, but, uh, you know... A benefit of something like the tower would be the fact that you get so much vision. That's true. You do get vision. Towers I... have a very tight line. I'm just trying to quickly see here how much vision do you really get. From something like this. But I'm doing it with extremely tiny screen. You can zoom in again just to make it. Any Jade. Oh. Golly. Uh, <laughs> it's not the most impressive vantage point you can get, but if someone goes down this one particular path, you might see them walk by. Uh, some other play that's very viable on a map like this are some raider play along with these ramps here, as well as mech, like we were just talking about. Especially with all of the different height variation and vision, you can do a lot of damage with catapults. I believe the next map we have is a little bit of a meme, Cursed Temple. This one pits players in a very aggressive beginning where there's essentially a highway leading between the two bases. Um, yeah. That being said, it's not necessarily an easy path between the two, but it's a very short flying distance, so you can often see either dragon rushes, rushed drops, or gyrocraft play in that early game, along with um, people trying to just wall off this front section. Yeah, just because of the rush distance being really, really slow, I mean, really, really quick, really, really short, uh, you can easily get a scout. Uh, I believe the distance in between that is five tiles, so you're not able to block it with a single building if you wanted to. Uh, you do need two buildings to do that. Um, a lot of the times, either the game is over like in two bases where because of the short rush distance, and uh, there's a lot of map in the top side as well where uh, you can, you know, go into a longer game. But uh, yeah, I find that personally, most of the games, my games at least on this map, are very short and uh, there's you're just like two base battles essentially. And then with the low ground in the middle here, there's a lot of room for dangerous proxies. That, that is true, yes. Um, proxies and stuff like that, especially with the short rest distance. Um, can be very deadly on this map, I think. I don't think there's too much more to say on this map besides the fact that either it gets decided on the first two bases, or it's a contest to see can you block your opponent from getting their upper mines and stop them along the middle line here. Oftentimes I've seen people try to put towers up in this middle area uh, on their opponent's side to try to get vantage points and high ground bonuses, uh, especially for a Rax play, something like that, denying your opponent being able to do anything here, forces them to either go all the way back down to their natural and through this path where they're exposing themselves, their third or fourth um, gold mine is completely open, or they have to try to confront you, in which case they have to attack uphill, and there's so many disadvantages to that. Yeah, uh, one other thing I guess I do want to just mention is if you do choose that middle or the short highway as it is in the middle of the map, uh, in connecting the naturals, um, something like catapults can stay in your main and still rain down fire on the opponent. Uh, so something like that could be disastrous or it's a very uh, strong advantage PowerPoint. So 
uh, something to be aware of, I think. Yeah. On to the next one. Yep. So our next map, I believe... I am also going to pull up the uh, Twitch chat to see if we have anyone talking. Not quite yet. Not yet. I've been looking at the three, uh, Twitch chat, but... Sweet. Nothing. So the next map, and the last one we're going to be going over today, I'm going to open up Acadia afterwards, but we have Xenos. Another map that's been in the ranked pool for a good amount of time, not quite as long as Ravaged. Is it using the snowy theme. Uh, it's another one with interesting use of different locations. Let's see here. My spell. Apparently not. I think it's with the X if you're. Yeah, I put an I on the end of the O because I was typing faster than my fingers were moving. <laughs> so we have players starting first. We have one in the top right, one in the bottom left. It's in odd shaped main area where you can have interesting plays like I've seen people put up towers in the side area over here uh, the natural is directly above it there is a hole that can lead to a potential third fourth expansion idea up here uh, or a much wider entrance down here with a closer mind to your main base and that still gives you ideas potentially going down here or much more risky going over here with expansion um, any comments about the starting area? Yeah, um, there's some really interesting things, I feel like, a lot of strategic decisions that you have to make on Xenos uh, when you're, especially taking your third base. Uh, but first things first, in your natural, that, uh, path can be blocked off by a, a 4x4 building. Um, the one where it's headed to, like, the far, like, in a straight line, yeah. Um, so you can put, like, a, like, a workshop or something there to completely block it off. Um, I think that's the wrong one. I'm talking about the one... yeah, that one. This one? Yeah, um, and then if you do take the, the third in that route, uh, if closer to the cliffs, uh, like, hugging the edge of the... Like that? The, not the... not that third, the other third. If you take the other third... Well, that's some good falling. I think I think I'm looking at your thing a little bit differently uh, because of the delay. But yeah, if you look at this wall, uh, this uh, if you get your third on this location, catapults can actually uh, attack your gold mine from the top, the cliff over there in the corner. Yeah, so it's rather dirty. That, I've lost a yes. few of mine from that. Yes, I was shocked when the fir the first time that happened to me because I didn't even think about that. You know, a great way um, to yeah. stop that is something like this. Yeah, you can just have a tower there, or any just put buildings there, even specifically in those um, two tiles. Yeah, I think you might be able to reach from slightly to the right of that, but I'm not entirely sure. I haven't looked at it. Um, but yeah, it's a definitely a dangerous third to take if you are going up against a mech player. Probably would prefer to take the other third. Um, yeah. And then also one thing I also want to draw attention to is the neutral buildings in the middle of the map. Uh, there's a lot of forges and there's also, also uh, advanced workshops as well. Uh, destroying them can lead to uh, potentials for surrounds um, and you can get really big surrounds on your, your opponent. Um, actually for this map I created a map guide video um, for this map and also Ravage so if you're interested you can take a look at that as well. Another thing to note about this particular map, I'm going to demonstrate this with a drag mechanic in the editor here, is you'll see on either side of the map there's this little island with gaps. And sometimes uh, entities that are greater than a tile large will struggle going through these, and they're actually going to get their AIs stuck where it can't quite go through there. You can see it kind of clips to get by. I don't know if that was fixed or not, but I, I do remember that being um, an issue that would come up with their AI sometimes. Yeah, I feel like uh, that would be something that uh, does bother 2x2 two two units, so Gatlings, Catapults, and also Ballista and Werewolves. That's something to be mindful of anyone trying to run either late game, Beast, or Mech. 
and they want to try to go through this area. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I do want to point out is if you put a unit on uh, the cliffs that overlook the middle of the map, uh, there's like a little ledge there. That's pretty cool. Is uh, it this ledge? Just... Yes, that Stop. ledge. And also, yeah, and also, let's say put a raider there, and if you put a raider on the other ledge on the opposite side, um, you're able to just kind of monitor the middle path easily um because your vi your vision should be just enough to uh like look at the any units that are uh coming in through the middle of the map so um if you have map presence and if you're able to um you know get gain map control you should be able to see any unit that comes across the map in the middle of the map Without any other questions about this map, what is the goal of this tournament? Organizer. The organizer, which is, uh, uh, I think the big goal is just to, I guess, promote community and stuff like that. Uh, I feel like, especially in a small community like Little War Game, even in this community, uh, there's a lot of, like, cliques in a way, where... Um, if you have, like, you have your certain people that you only play games with and you kind of ignore the other people and stuff like that, uh, by forcing people to be in, like, teams and also groups of people that they may not know, uh, you know, you get to learn a little bit more of the game from the veteran players and also uh, you get to, you know, have some fun playing matches against people that you may not have uh, had the opportunity or uh, the presence of mind to uh, play against. So that's really uh, exciting and interesting. And then also it's a lot of fun, right? You know, competing on a, a big scale, quote unquote big scale, um, you know, playing with uh, players who are better and worse and stuff like that. Uh, you know, getting to know new maps as well. So like uh, community created maps such as Acadia and also some other maps that I'll be adding in the future weeks. Um, yeah, so it's just gonna be a lot of fun for everyone, I think. Um, yeah. Sweet. So I'm going to send into the little war game chat here, the general channel on the server, or rather the game itself, the list of players who have signed up, barring the team captains. That way we can start going through that. Yeah, uh, those are ordered alphabetically, so there's no Sweet. particular... Is that how we want to try to go through the different players? Yeah, yeah let's might do have that. Weird rat. And does this include... Deathstroke said he couldn't join anymore, is that correct? Uh, yeah, he said something about personal reasons and stuff like that, so... Okay, we have Crazy, crazy X... The, uh, crazy the 12th, I believe, that looks like. Is it too late to join the tournament? Um... Signups have been over, but uh, I don't know. If I, I'm thinking if we get four people who are interested in joining, um, then we might be able to add you guys. Um, if I were you, I'd check out the Discord and talk to me there, um, and I'll get back to you after this stream. Also, reach out to your friends, see if they want to join too, because that way yeah. we could get a full team of you and the people you like to play with, potentially. Exactly. So, posting this right now, we have Consciously Eating, Glaba, Hero of Ages, I have mispronounced that so many times, Bobo, Lily V, Max F39, Mr. Pentaka, Migat, Red Dane, Sadocaster, The Fighter, and Yummy Blah Blah. Of these, the ones that I cannot comfortably guess the level of would be... Max 59, Red Dane, Sado Caster, and Consciously Eating. Yeah, so um, we can get to them once we get to them, and uh, I do know a little bit about some of them, but not all of them, so how about let's just start with Consciously Eating. Uh, first and foremost, he has made a name in the community recently, and he's actually one of the things that got me looking at the server again, uh, with his tournament that he recently held. He has the intention of hosting some more tournaments in the coming time. While he doesn't profess himself to be a really amazing player, he is super excited about the genre. Yeah, 
Um, actually, I believe consciously eating played uh, somewhat competitively in other RTS games such as StarCraft and Warcraft. I'm not exactly sure which ones, um, but yeah, he's definitely no stranger to the RTS genre. Uh, he's fairly new to the community compared to other players, um, but yeah, he's been definitely been around for a little bit and um, is really excited to be in the competitive scene, I think. He's always uh, practicing games, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, like you said, he hosted the tournament fairly recently, uh, which I won. Yay me! Um, but yeah. Have you played any games with Conscious Dating? I have not played them myself. I think I've spectated one or two games, and I've seen um, some talk of him from post games. He's definitely always seeking to learn from every game he plays and trying to find new ways to expand his skill base. Yeah, for sure. Um, you think he, Deathstroke in the chat saying uh, he think he was a Protoss Master or something. Maybe. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, he's definitely someone who's quick to learn and always eager to learn as well. So, uh, you know, if, he, if he's matched up with some of the better players, um, he'll be definitely looking to uh, improve and try to find advantage and stuff like that. So I think with the proper mentor, all. he could be a very valuable asset to any team he's on. Yeah, I agree, definitely. Uh, especially with like the background of coming from different RTS games. Um, generally, people like that tend to pick up the game a lot more quicker and are uh, way faster at learning new things. So especially if they already have any uh, experience. So. Definitely someone to be look out for, but at the moment, I feel like his skill level might be mid, mid to low, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, definitely valuable. I feel like there's a lot of potential for growth in this tournament for him. Onwards, we have a very historic name for the community, Glaba. He's been around quite a bit. He's done tons of tournaments, competitions, so many things. And he's performed very strongly in the past. Um, one thing that he has done quite a bit of as well is some cheese with mixed results. But overall, I think he is an extremely competitive player when it comes to uh, do I want to pick this guy up for my team. Yeah, I think I agree. Uh, Glava definitely uh, is one of the stronger players, I think, um, of like even even of all time, I guess. Um, I think he tends to play Beast a lot, as that is his preferred uh, race, preferred faction. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's very strong. Uh, he played very well in the previous Pro League as well. Um, yeah, he's a very solid pickup. I think uh, I'm looking at the stats right now. Uh, for those of you, I'll, I'll, I'll link it in the chat here as well. These are the stats from the previous Pro League, and uh, Glaba went 80% win rate, so 4 out of 5 games. So. Very strong performance out of him. Opening that up for anyone that wants to see as well. Just going to slowly go through this while you talk. Yeah. You got some stats from previous Pro League. Uh, you'll see some names that you recognize. So this is breaking down the different teams. On the topic, we can also look at um, the various team captains as they performed in this too. Going down the list, we have Weird Rats at a win rate of 0%. Yeah, but Weird Rats improved so much since, since oh, this time. So. Night and day. AC yeah, absolutely. winning um, 5 of 7 games. Laba at 4 of 5 on AC's team in the previous tournament. Might give uh, some rapport for AC pick, trying to pick up Glava. Uh, we also have Yummy, which we're going to talk about in a bit. The only other one here is going Yourself. to be Destroy Call. Uh, in terms of ones we've already talked about, Destroy oh, Call okay. at a 4 out of 6. Coming in with a clutch win um, in the finals, I believe. Sweet. You guys can check that out if you're more interested. Pour over the stats and stuff like that. Um, yeah. The next one here is going to be Hero of Ages. 
This is another very strong player who has been around a decent bit, a few years. Uh, if I remember correctly, he mainly does racks. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I kind of see him as a rats, maybe sometimes beast kind of player. Uh, Hero of Ages uh, definitely, you know, punched above his punching grade in the the previous pro league. I think at a hundred percent win rate in that hundred percent win rate. And five out of five like, games. A, exactly, and that's uh, that's against like really good players as well. I think uh, he he took down AC in one of the games. Uh, he, uh, yeah, he just performed really well in the previous season. So I expect him to be uh, someone who is picked up really quickly in the draft. Uh, but he hasn't played in a while, so you know. That might be something that you might want to consider. Um, but yeah. Onwards, we have myself. I was actually picked up towards the second half of the draft of the previous Pro League tournament, being picked third on my team. Or second, second out of the drafted players. Um, I don't know if you, you want to break down or if you want me to introduce a little you bit of my player style. A little bit? Yeah, do you want to sell yourself? You know, be like, oh, pick me up because I'm really good. I don't know. Well, I think no one words it better than Rhinus, who um, I was going through the chat in the Discord general one day and I noticed I got a ping. I start reading around the ping and Rhinus said that we used to have a player named Hobo. If you could beat him, then you've entered the mid game. Or, uh, mid-tier players. Um, I tend to have lower APMs, but fairly effective APMs, if people can follow that. Uh, I don't have a particular race I specialize in. Instead, I try to build and adapt things for particular opponents, and try to really pull out anything that you might see. Yeah, I tend to agree. Uh, I guess uh, putting it in a different way, you're kind of like a gatekeeper. I don't know if that's something that you would you know, feel proud about or something. Uh, but yeah, Hobo's, Hobo's been a really good uh, mid-tier player, a uh, very solid pickup for uh, Team Destroy Call in the previous season. And like you said, I think one of your biggest strengths is your adaptability and the ability to play all three races. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, you also enjoy, you know, pouring over people's replays and trying to find weaknesses in people's play and stuff like that. Analyzing maps like uh, we did just previously. Uh, so I'd say Hobo is a definitely a, a great pickup to be as uh, someone who's very flexible, uh, someone who's able to be, you know, like the strategist in the team. Um, yeah, I'd say you're, you would be a very valuable asset on any team. I also had um, four out of five wins during that tournament. So eighty percent win rate. Yes, indeed. On to Lily B. Do you know who Lily B is? Out of curiosity, I've seen the name and I believe I played some modded games, but I've not actually played a melee with them. Uh, Lily B is physics fan for those of you. Who Okay. Physics fan is so that kind of, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So is this Lily a Smurf or, account? No, I think he's kind of like phased out of physics fan and became Lily B in a way. I think I don't know. I don't know exactly. I don't know his mind exactly. So, uh, but yeah, physics fan was once uh, a very very strong player in the little war game. But I feel like uh, as the community grew around, uh, like you know raising the skill ceiling. Uh, he's been kind of left behind. He's not as like a top player as he was previously, uh, but he's, I think, uh, he tends to play a lot of aggressive play styles, a lot of uh, like like Tuda and stuff like that. He also is very good at his uh, two racks with Raider control, so uh, he's, um, yeah, he's definitely a player who has a lot of experience under his belt, but uh, um, yeah. Is isn't quite at the level uh, relative to the field as he used to be. Yes, his micro is, without a doubt, extremely good. Though, that is, yeah. uh, it seems the longer the game goes on, he starts to lose pacing quite a bit. But again, if you do a map like uh, Curse Temple, it's only those first few minutes that really matter because that sets the entire rest of the match. 
could make all the difference. Yeah. He he's also has some like crazy strats and stuff like that sometimes, so uh, definitely someone who can be a potentially a dangerous weapon in this pro league. Um, so yeah, I'd expect him to be very valuable sometimes, and also if people are able to prepare for him, uh, then he might be hard-pressed to find a win against a solid opponent who is prepared. Okay, onwards to Max F 39 I know absolutely nothing about this individual. Same here. I know absolutely nothing about this person. Uh, so Let's see if I can find their um, if I can find their account. Their account. Yeah, I actually think I did, but I don't have it like saved or anything like that, so it might be difficult. Um, yeah, I think I, th I don't know. This person, I I really don't know much about, so I haven't. I've seen the name online like one or two times, but uh... I have found. His account. Okay. Looks like he has nine ranked games, two hundred seventy-four games in general, and then it looks like he's got a personal text in Cyrillic, which unfortunately I cannot read. Give me okay. English, French, or sarcasm. I'll be able to translate that for you, but not quite Cyrillic. Uh, yeah, me neither. Um, he has an impressive three name? wins against uh, Pro Smith. I'm not quite sure who that is. Can you hover over his name to just to see how long he's been around? He has a win against Lily B, which is pretty impressive too. And, uh, Player since February 4th, 2023. Couple months. Okay, so very new to the community, I guess. Um, I'd imagine that uh, his skill level isn't quite up there with some of the other players, but a win against Lily B is, uh, you know, a good sign in, in ranked, so... Uh, I'm not quite sure, you know, I don't know, I don't have much to go off of, but, uh, yeah. On to Mr. Pencatka. Now, this gentleman is widely known for his maps, I believe, more so than his melee fighting. Uh, I have seen a number of games from him. He is by no means a pushover when it comes to those melee games. Uh... I'll be interesting to see how he's grown as a player since my absence. Yeah, I haven't seen him online too much either. Uh, yeah, like you said, he's definitely a map maker, mod maker, sprite maker, that kind of thing. Um, the few games I did see against him, uh, he always went for mills and a whole bunch of gyros, so I don't know, maybe that's what he likes to do. Uh, but yeah, uh, in terms of skill-wise, I would say he's in the lower mid, uh, that kind of era. Um, yeah. Onwards, we have a fellow content creator in the form of Nigit. Someone who started off rather strong, growing day by day, playing anyone and everyone he could, and he's still making videos out there. Run into yeah, him a couple of times recently. Yeah, I'd say Nigat is definitely a, a you know a, a welcome part of the community, uh, making videos like you said, and also um, he has like some guides on build orders and stuff like that. He has he casts some matches and stuff like that as well. Um, he's definitely someone who is uh, very willing to put in the work and uh, the effort to you know improve at the game, uh, always analyzing and stuff like that as well. Uh, so definitely, I would say, a very valuable resource, kind of like you, in my in my opinion. Uh, someone who can be very flexible and yet uh, also, uh, you know, you know, skill level is quite up there as well. Uh, and then a lot of game knowledge as well from, like, uh, casting and stuff like that. So uh, I'd say he would be, you know, a very spelled pick. Definitely. Next up is another unknown, at least for me, Red Dane. Believe I'm pronouncing yes. that correctly. I think you're right. Red Dane. I initially had no idea who this player was, but uh, I saw him online. Uh, I think yesterday. So uh, looking I at also, him now, you know, he's been a member since September twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. At least with the account, he's had forty one games. Yeah. So Red Dane. I I talked to him. Uh, apparently, he's someone who's from StarCraft 2 that AC brought over, actually. I think AC, you know, reached out to some of his uh, StarCraft 2 friends in in for the Pro League, right? Uh, I think he's, uh, 
one of the like competitive players in StarCraft 2, so obviously uh, the base mechanics and stuff are really there, so uh, you expect to see you know a really good uh, like fundamentals and mechanics. As well uh, as but, micro, probably, in that regard. Yeah, abs yeah exactly. Uh, but just being someone who is new to the to the game, to Little War Game, uh, there's a lot of stuff that are you know meta dependent, and like under the understanding of the game won't be as high. Uh, I feel like with a really good uh, mentor, with a really good team leader who can show them the ropes and you know explain the games, explain different builds, the nuance and strategies, builds and yeah, counters, the right yeah. plays. I think he'd be very very scary. Um, and someone that a lot of people will sleep on on this draft and also when they play. We do have some information coming in here from Deathstroke saying that Lily B, um, C E, which I believe he's referring to consciously eating, and yeah. Max are, as well as Sato, are about the same level in terms of skill. Fair enough, fair enough. I haven't played, uh, I just I haven't played Max or Sato 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 Caster Sato Caster, so uh, I'm not quite. Sato Caster is going to be the next one to discuss here. Another one that I'm not too familiar with. Me neither. I have seen his name, uh, you know, occasionally in the lobby, uh, but I haven't played a game or seen anything uh, with him. So, uh, according to Deathstroke over here, he's uh, one of the you know similar levels with consciously eating uh, Lily B. So. Uh, is the self-proclaimed yeah. worst LWG player. Uh, looking at his uh, player description right now. Mm. Yeah, Member since not... April 5th, 2022. So I guess fairly fairly new to the community. but uh... well, One of the benefits to a format like this is um, being able to... Uh, really gain a lot of the skill from your fellow players here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just like picking up things from more experienced players, uh, really elevating your game to the next level. Um, looks like Sato almost got this uh, death stroke with cheese, apparently. So uh, I guess, yeah, he could be someone who has a potential to a lot of growth and stuff like that. So could be a valuable resource. But uh, definitely right now, I'd say not as highly skilled as some of the other players so apparently on, pretty good early rate of micro not good against beast so there you go on to the next one here is going to be someone who we've actually seen throughout this entire stream grinding away at ranked in 1v1 is the fighter yeah the fighter is i'd say somewhat new to the community compared to other players uh, but he had uh, 2021. I guess that's kind of new. I don't know. Um, He's dedicated yeah, though to trying to improve. He is definitely dedicated. He is. I see him online playing games with a whole bunch of players. Uh, I see him, you know, asking for help on the Discord and stuff like that. Um, so I'd say he definitely has the mentality to improve and get better at the game. Uh, if you put him with a competent team leader with who teaches him a lot of things, then he's going to improve his gameplay exponentially, I feel like. Um, even, like, I've played a couple of games with him a long time ago, and then I played a couple of games with him uh, recently as well, and I could tell that he's gotten a lot better. So, uh, he plays mostly Racks, but he's been playing a little bit of Beast recently, and I think his Beast is actually a lot better than his Racks. Um, but yeah. I've only played him a handful of times, and that was after... Uh, that, like I was saying a bit earlier, when I was called out by Remus as the gatekeeper, uh, the fighter insisted on playing me, so I proceeded to watch several replays that the fighter uh, posted around the Discord, broke down what I expected him to do, and then essentially hard countered him. So I wouldn't say that's that might be a, an accurate depiction of how something like that might go. Um, okay, that's fair enough, fair enough. But again, like you were saying, if he can be with the right coach who can direct him the uh, proper ways. Um, when I played him, he didn't understand some terminology such as what a proxy is. Um, so I don't know how familiar he was with the genre going into it. But I think there's a lot of growth, and if someone can give him the book, he'll fly. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, of all the players, I feel like the fighter has one of the biggest uh, potentials for growth in the tournament, so, um, yeah. 
And the last player coming up here is, again, no stranger to tournaments or competitive play, Yummy Blah Blah. Yes, Yummy Blah Blah. Um, I would say, in my humble opinion, one of the best players of the game of all time. Um, probably the most scariest player that I would hate to face if I had to play a game. Um, yeah, he's just really, really strong in the early mid game, especially. Uh, um, he's been around for basically forever. Um, has some really good beast in particular. He can also play different uh, factions as well, but his beast really stands out as being very, very strong. Um, yeah, he's. Do you do you know much about him? I've played him on and off throughout the years. I'm hard pressed to get any wins out of him. I know that much. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I when I first joined Little War Game and I first get started getting to really competitive and like grinding a lot, um, I played t a ton of games with them. I must have played at least like two hundred or a hundred somewhere around the lines of that. I must have won only like two or three games. So he's absolutely when he when he was uh, actively playing, he was absolutely at the tip top of Little War Game. I feel like, but I'm pretty sure he hasn't um... played in. Yeah. Pulling up his player description here, besides his impressive MMR of 425, um, he's fittingly been a player since well, before records began. Um, in his uh, description, he's got various accolades such as first player to popularize One Den Expo, uh, a build that we don't see a lot in the current iteration of the game, but used to be extremely standard. First player to get first division, first player to get gamma division, first player to get beta division. I remember each of those two times. Along with a quote here from Zhao, if anyone remembers that wonderful moderator from a few years ago. It says, uh, whenever I allow specs, I get given crap for censoring for my play, so I don't allow my specs. Zhao says, please don't do this to anyone else. It's a complete waste of people time. I'm not sure about the content here. Yeah, me neither. But yeah, Yummy Blah Blah is definitely, I'd say, a uh, very, very, very strong player. Um, yeah. But like I said, yeah, I don't think he's played a lot recently, so uh, there might be, you know, some concerns about his form. Uh, but you know, this how the saying goes: form is temporary, class is permanent. Uh, so he has those mechanics down, regardless of the version of the game. Yeah. Probably a matter of brushing off the rust. Yeah. So that is all of the prospective players for the team captains to pick. Um, let's see here. Guess two more things we should try to get done. Unless you have anything else you want to add after this. Is What are these two more things? Well, the first is tips or how people might want to strategize for going about the um, draft. For example, right, so... if you put your top four, you're probably not going to get all four of them. So do you want to plan to get some of the mid-tier players um, by having them higher in your pick list to guarantee at least a solid mid-team? Right, so this is, I guess, a lot of, like, mind games and optimization and stuff like that. I actually uh, debated amongst myself uh, the different potential draft uh, mechanics I could use. Um, I ultimately settled just on a snake draft, just a standard one. So I do have I a, another question here. Yeah. Um, for the purposes of this, are people putting all of the names in order? That is correct. So, okay. um, as opposed to I pick one from the pool, then you pick one, kind of like uh, schoolyard dodgeball style. Right. So I was thinking about what the different potential like uh, things that we could do for like a draft. Um, like the most obvious one was like I pick one, you pick one, snake draft kind of thing. Uh, but then uh, one of my big goals for uh, this pro league season two is. Uh, the ability for anyone to play and like it's for it to be asynchronous so you don't have to be like the first pro league season one of the biggest downfalls was that uh, you had set times and you had to play the matches in order and that meant that pretty much everyone had to be 
ready and available on a, one day for like three hours, not not three hours, that's a lot, but like two hours maybe at a, at a time, uh, especially if you had to go to like an ace match where you wouldn't know. I thought know short you of the ace match. match in the final, that was asynchronous for the first tournament. Was it? Yeah, and then we streamed at the end of the week, I believe. Oh. Could be wrong about that, but I, that that I, is the way that would make the most sense. Right, I guess. I, I believe know, it was just be the finals that was synchronous. Okay, it makes sense. For some reason, I had that in my brain where, like, you had to... But, like, e either way, you, like, the ace match was still, you know, you had to wait on the other matches and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, yeah, um, I wanted everything to be asynchronous as much as possible. Um, I know, like, I ideally, in an ideal situation, we would have a draft where everyone has mic and, you know, they're just talking about who will want to... Uh, who wants to pick what and like you can draft like in real time uh but i know like uh i believe it's jay and destroy call they're not quite uh you know uh i guess open to just you know being available and like on a mic and like sharing their voice so you know that's something that uh, we have to be aware of and you know allow uh so i decided to do it asynchronously uh the the, the draft um but yeah so the way it's gonna go is that each team captain is going to list all the players in order of preference and then uh for the first draft i'll pick someone or i'll get give them to the top person on their list and then cross off that player from everyone's list and then so on and so forth so um, and then for the actual playing of the games the way it's going to work is at the start of each week the team captain is going to work with their team and they're going to put their players in order where there's going to be a total of five games, I believe, um, and you pick the order player. Uh, the, there's first the map order, correct? And then you pick yes. which player is going to do each maps, and you don't know what the other team's going to have. So That's you could right. have so... your fourth player fight their number one player, and by odds of how you guys have it set up. And on top of that, each week we're going to have one of the players on each team play twice as opposed to once and each player can only do that once such that by the end of it everyone would be would have played a week with four game or one game each and at least one week with two games each i, I believe you have it worded a little bit better right. than this word yeah um you're mostly right except uh that not everyone will play two games per week um there will be like right now with four players per team and four teams that means there's going to be three matchups so you're going to play one match against each other team and that means uh, out of your four players only three of them will have to do double duty so you're going to have one player who's just going to play one map every single See? map but yeah but yeah you're essentially correct um so that adds for more strategic diversity you know do we play our blessed player against uh which team to get the best odds like if we're confident against this team um then i guess we play one of the weaker players on double duty that week or maybe we, we do the opposite maybe we're like oh we really want to confirm the win against this team you know so we put our you know we we put our best player in double duty on that week stuff like that so there's definitely some mind games uh and yeah like you said uh the maps are announced earlier in the week and then uh looking at the maps team captains will decide without knowing what other team captains decide they'll get to choose who's playing on each map and then uh we'll go from there um so the matches can are going to be played asynchronously so whenever you do, and your opponent are able to find a time you can just play uh send the replay in um otherwise um if you are unable to find a time that's why we have a i guess a fail safe or like a guaranteed match time uh that's gonna be saturdays at 11 a.m pacific time uh it might be i don't know where you guys are located but you'll you can see it in the discord as well so if you're unable to find a time maybe you guys live in different time zones um then that is going to be the default time for any matches that cannot be scheduled um but yeah Okay, there's one more thing I want to ask you before we get into this. Um, just a moment. The fighter was asking if I want to play a match. So, my last question for you is, 
with your hot take look at the draftable players, who do you think are the top four choices? And I will not be offended if I am not on that list. Okay. Um, straight up, if I were to make a team, if I were to, you know, rank these players, number one has to be Yummy, just because, just, just, yeah, I think skill-wise, he's definitely the biggest, uh, biggest player that, uh, you know, the strongest player of the field. Um, I think that would be my number one choice. And then after that, there's a lot of really good, you know, really, you know, tempting Appetite. I don't know how, if appetizing is the right word, but a let's, lot of players... Let's make it would... a little bit simpler. The, where teams of four pick your three players that you would want to try to get, if you could take any of them. Okay. I There's a lot... Ah, this is so hard, though. There's, there's a part of me that wants... Okay, there's a part of me that wants to take, like, really... All the really good players and make, like, a, like a dream team. But there's also part of me that, like, I really want to... Like have people such as the fighter and like Red Dane on my team, just so that I could like really help them and like see them grow and stuff like that. Um, so it's this is just really difficult for me, honestly. And then at the same time, people like you or Nigat would be very uh, good for like analyzing opponents, uh, analyzing maps and stuff like that. This is I don't know. It's just I, I will refuse to answer people. Uh, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but perfectly fine. I feel like you you could really get around. Like there's there's potential. There's for so a many lot combinations of that would work. Exactly. Yeah. Like, do you go for people who are like tied and trusted? You know, people like Glava, Hero of Ages, yourself, uh, that kind of thing. Or do you go for people who, with the intention to like train them up with like? Uh, Not to mention those caster. younger and are those um, less experienced in the game that are more malleable. It's going to be exactly. harder to anticipate what are they going to pull out. That's yeah, exactly. So like someone like if you're playing against like Glava, for example, you you're gonna expect Beast, you're gonna expect maybe a quick two den. Or if you're playing against Lily, you're gonna expect a you know, a two Rax Raiders, right? If Worm was but present, then, you, you could know that he's gonna go Rax and he's gonna make a giant ball and push it straight into your base. Right, exactly. There's there's a lot of like predefined, I guess, uh examples and like uh identities for some of the older players but like if you're a new player if you're playing against red day and you have no idea what he's gonna play right so um that sort of thing also uh would allow me to like rate them really highly as well uh there's a lot of different combinations that you can do uh, there's a lot of different uh appealing aspects so it's up to you uh team players and also uh just regular players as well just to you know try to get on the team that you want to be or you know create your own team stuff like that um yeah i think it's going to be really exciting i'm really excited to see uh it happen so we'll see and just going into it again based off of um hold on here mine's going faster than my voice is I'm also going to pull up the calendar for anyone that wants to look at it. So currently it is the 16th all day long. Um, yesterday we had the team captains announced as well as the week one maps announced. The week before we had the sign up phase and by the 18th the team captains have to decide on their uh, drafts what order of the players they want to try to snag up, and we'll have the teams announced. By the 20th, we'll have the initial set of player order decided on, with games starting on, I believe that's Monday the 22nd. That's right. As well as the matchups being posted and the week two maps being posted. I also encourage anyone who wants to read more about what's going to go on with this tournament, the format, the various rules, the restrictions, how it's going to play, to check out the announcements under the Little War Game Discord. There's also a tournament chat uh, channel as well, so you can check that out as well. And then also, I don't know if you'd be down or not, but if 
there's the opportunity and you would like a second caster for the various games, I'd be down to assist with streaming all the replays at the end of each week. Yeah, if you want to. Um, obviously, I don't want to put too much pressure on you, especially Personal. because you will be playing in the tournament. Um, for me, from my side, I'll do my best to uh, cast as many replays as possible. No guarantees, but uh, I'd like to ideally do at least a, like a week recap for each map, or I, sorry, for each week, um, and then try to cast as many games as possible. But uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how busy I get. Some other logistic questions for you. Mm -hmm. Are you going to allow live spectators and live right, so, casting of games? Or... Right. So I will uh, upload more rules ba uh, about the, the, like the maps themselves, the games themselves, as we get closer and closer to week one. Um, but yeah, I don't. I'm gonna probably gonna just copy and paste from uh, my May tournament, which I did last year, um, and then the rules for that was if both players are okay with it, then it's fine. But if you know one of them is like, oh no, I don't want anyone to watch them, you know, it's up to them, and they're 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 okay to say that, right? Especially because you know, uh, 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 like some people are very laggy. Not gonna call out anyone, but I am gonna call out someone. <laughs> Uh, like, Destroy Call is pretty laggy, notorious for that. Um, also, this person is asking what happens if two players draw a map. Uh, you'll just have to replay the same map. So, let's say you get into a stalemate situation where, uh, I don't know, let's say I have a tower and you have a tower and we don't want to fight into the tower, then it'll just be a draw and you just play the map again. In which case, yeah. both players have to agree that it's a draw. Um, if yeah. I might make a suggestion, having mm -hmm. one person who's not a member of either team but is a member of the tournament, spectate each game, and then just announce, like, this is this game of this series of Week 1 of Pro League Season 2 tournament. Uh, so not like the added offensivity, I guess? Say that again? Like a confirm? Sorry, like the authenticity, like a, like a stamp of confirmation. Not that I think yeah. that anyone would go about um, trying to, let's say... This is not a jab at any of the players here. Let's say I play the fighter, and I beat the fighter, but um, I try submitting that as the game for that week. So as a way to confirm that this was in fact the game that was played for the purpose of the tournament. I guess that's a good idea. Um, not that I think that anyone would do it based off honor system, but... We'll, we'll hash out the details a little bit more. Um... I'll I'll do my best to like be online as much as possible so I can be one of those officiating I guess sources. But yeah, uh, I think that I'll take that into consideration. It'll probably be a good idea. And then if anyone else watching this, either live or in the future, feel free to reach out to either Square Root of Negative One or myself with any suggestions you have for the format. I can always forward it on to him. Yeah. Do you have any closing remarks for the audience? And this is also um, going to be posted to YouTube afterwards, hopefully yeah. before the draft deadline. Hopefully, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think uh, for those of you who are interested in signing up, um, I actually know that uh, there are some people who might be interested. Um, so if we can get four players, I'm thinking of before the deadline, so like within a day. Um, then I'm thinking of maybe we'll add those four players and hopefully get five teams of, I mean, four teams of five, and then that would be really nice, so that no one has to do, like, double duties and play two maps. Um, but other than that, I just hope uh, you all, those of you who are watching and those of you who are playing, have a wonderful time playing and watching. Um, I'm really excited for it, and uh, I hope you guys all are excited for it as well. Excellent. I hope to see you guys in the games.